Hey there! In this video, I want to show you how to use the new v4 release of the Python client to perform queries in VB8. The new client runs gRPC under the hood to speed up your queries. But also, we've made changes to the API to make it easier for you to formulate queries and to deal with the responses. Let's take a look at a few examples. I've got a cloud instance of VB8 set up already with a couple of collections. One is of movies, and another is of reviews that are link, uh, connected or related to these movies. So let's grab them first and then work with them. Client collections get. That's going to create a Python object called movies that we can interact with, like send queries to. Um, let's do the same thing with let's just duplicate that line. I'll call it reviews, and that'll be for the review collection. Let's start with a near text query. So I'm going to look under the query namespace or submodule. And if I do that, you can see that there's all of these uh, methods here, like the M25 hybrid and so on. So these are all um, queries um, or searches for the most part for hybrid search, keyword search, and near whatever search. So let's perform a near text search to start with for some holiday movies. Um, query holiday season. And let's put a limit of two. And what I'm going to do is to say that, hey, let's have a look at the response. We'll have to assign the output to a variable. So let's do that. And for, I know that the response object, and you can see because it's typed, I can inspect it. And that's got the object attribute. If I can say 40 in objects, because I know that that's a list. Let's just print the whole set of properties. But you can see that there's a whole lot of attributes here. Um, but let's start with the properties, and I'll show you what that is. And let's have a look at the UID as well. Why not? And now if I print that, you can see it's printed a whole lot of um, data for each response, and also the UID. Now, note that I haven't specified which properties to return in my query. And that's because with the new client, by default, it'll return all of those um, properties and a UID for the object, unless, of course, it's something really heavy like a blob. So that's the only plot property data type that's excluded by default. Let's extend that query to grab some reviews, which are linked to. So to do that, I can use this return references parameter. And what I need to do then is to provide a set of references. Um, I can do this by providing a Oh, I, have to, I have to use a helper class. So let's import that whole submodule classes dot um, query as WQ. You can, of course, import individual classes, but I'm going to be using a few of those. So I'll use that. And I'll say query reference link on. And I know that I have a property called has review. And let's grab the return properties of um, the username. So that'll be the writer of the review. So, and just like properties, I'm going to wrap this into a list. Um, I'm going to just return one, but let's wrap that into a list. And if you do want to just return some of the properties, you can do a similar thing here, properties. And let's just grab for now the title and tagline. Taglines are fun. And now if I want to have a look at the responses, that would be now in the response or the references, excuse me, um, attribute. And each reference is now like a little bit like a property, right? Because it's a reference property. So I need to provide the reference property name to start with. That is has review. And within that, that's going to have objects. So you can see the structure here is starting to mirror the structure of the response itself. And you can imagine why that might be because they are linked references to other sets of objects. So let's just have a look at the first um, review object here. So just like our response object, it's going to have properties. So let's have a look to see what that looks like. There you go. So we have the properties here. That, uh, that's what our first print statement is, the UUID. And this is the 
reference line that is printed out the username and the actual username itself. So that's the property of the review collection. And this is the value of that property. So that's pretty simple, right? And notice here, I didn't have to remember what the property names or what the parameter names, excuse me, uh, had to be in the query because I'm not providing a raw JSON to alleviate. But what I'm doing is using these helper um, parameters and classes, which have the parameters built in as part of its init function. So that, that's really, really, really nice. Um, let's add a filter to this query. So what I'm going to do is use the filters parameter. Again, I didn't have to look that up, which is nice. And there are, I know that there's a filter class. So let's use that. I want to filter by, I can filter by all of those different things, but I want to filter by property at the moment. Um, let's, def let's filter these movies by runtime. So uh, if I want to look for movies with runtime, let's say I want to look for something short that I can watch in less than say 100 minutes. Um, that should do it. And if I run this again, oh, let's, what I'll do is I will also grab the, I'll just delete that and just grab all the properties for now. And let's just do um, title and let's do runtime here. Cool. So the results have changed. Now I've got The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a breezy 76 minutes, and the classic jingle, on the, jingle all the way at 89 minutes. And you can see that meets our criteria of less than 100 minutes. And if I want to, let's say, be even more restrictive or I want to add additional conditions, I can add another one here and combine them with an ampersand or a pipe. So if I add an ampersand, that's an and condition. So now if I want something that's less than 100 minutes and say greater than, let's see if I can thread the needle at 85 and see what results come back. There you go. We've still got jingle all the way because that meets all the conditions. And we've got taken. Not sure if that's a holiday movie, but uh, it does meet the criteria. So that's um, what we're looking for. And if I want to convert that to a generative query, what I would do is change that submodule to generate. And the rest of the syntax remains the same. All I need to do is now provide, a, um, provide the prompt for the language model. So let's do that by looking through the parameters. I'll use single prompt. And I'll say, hey, language model, um, please translate the, this into French. And let's just start easy with the title. And the single prompt, you'll remember, operates on, oops, I need a comma there. Um, the single prompt operates on each individual object. So the results are tied to each individual object, as in the generated result. And that means I can use this, look in the individual object, Look in the generated um, attribute. If I run this, this will take a couple of seconds as it goes through the third party API and the language model. There you go. This is taken in French. And this is jingle all the way in French. So that's quite nice. And similarly, if I want to use a or perform a grouped task on all of the results that come back, I would say, um, what do these movies have in common. Let's reduce, well, let's remove this restrictive filter and let's turn that into four results. Um, now, because this group task operates in the whole set of results, where I would look for the results or the generated output is under response itself, like so. And if I run this query again, it's going to perform that one additional generative query and return the results for us. So let's have a look. There you go. Oh, it's done quite well, actually. This movies or these movies have the common theme of Christmas, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's stop there. I won't go through every single method because um, you might find that a little bit boring. But I will note that there is also an aggregate um, namespace or submodule so that you can look through movies, aggregate and try these functions or methods yourself. And another nice thing is that if I look in the query submodule and say, look at near text, you get all of these different available parameters. And one of them 
is grouped by. Um, so that's the interface for that is quite nice. So if you have used grouped by before, the building that syntax was quite tricky, but it's become much easier. And same thing goes for things like re-ranking and so on. So of course, as always, I would encourage you to check out the official documentation for specific examples of all of those things. But I think um, the changes to the API, the inclusion of these doc strings, helper classes, and so on, really make the life easier or lives easier for developers. Um, for me, you know, writing documentation and making videos like this has been such a pleasure and it's become so much easier for me. And I hope it will be for you as well. Okay, then we'll see you soon.